I'm going to take you inside of my home office. Now, this is not my studio or where I do my shooting and my production work. This is my home office where I do all my Photoshop work, I do all my video editing, all the heavy lifting, run my website, all my administrative stuff. This is the office where I do all the work. I've made a two-part series. The first part walks through routine and all that kind of stuff. This part of the video, we're going to have a look at the equipment. And make sure you stay tuned to the very end because I'm going to give away a Wacom tablet. So hang around and I'll tell you how to do it. And of course, the main thing you're going to need is your computer. Now, whether you're a Mac person or you're a PC person, it doesn't really matter. What you want to do is make sure that you have a computer that matches your needs and your budget. Don't go overspending on equipment you don't need, but at the same time, if the equipment's not powerful enough to efficiently do what you want, it's going to become frustrating and difficult to do. So really ascertain your needs. First of all, what software are you running? In my case, I'm running the Adobe Creative Cloud, so I'm using things like Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, After Effects, InDesign, Illustrator. So you'll need some pretty beefy computing power in order to work with high definition video and high resolution files. Now, if you're just working with things like Microsoft Word and Excel um, and doing most of your work online, you don't need necessarily such a powerful computer. When you are doing these creative apps, a couple of the most important things really is making sure you've got a really powerful GPU. A GPU is your graphics processing unit. That is, or your graphics card. That's super important when you're working with things like video and Photoshop. In fact, one of the most important. You also wanna make sure you have fast drives and lots of RAM and storage space. So let's talk about the system that I have. Right now, I'm running a 2019 Mac Pro, so it's the, the new cheese grater type. Um, I actually have it facing backwards so that the jacks and the ports are facing me. I don't need to look at the front because there's nothing there. There's no CD-ROM or anything. So I just have it easily accessible sitting on the floor. Now, as far as monitors, the monitor I'm using right now is a 27-inch BenQ, and this is the photographer monitor. This works really well for me, and it's very important that I have a monitor that I can color calibrate and also that it has consistent color from edge to edge and consistent tones from edge to edge. This is very important because when I look at it, I want to make sure I'm getting accurate color. So one of the nice things about this monitor is it has very even coloring and it supports 99% of Adobe RGB, which means that most of the colors that I want to be able to see, I can see them right there on the screen. It's also very important that you calibrate your monitor. So in order for calibration, I use the X-Ray i1 Display Pro, and this is my uh, colorometer, and I can put that on the screen, calibrate it, get it very accurate. This just kind of pops open there, and you can see it there, and then I'll just put this back up the top and then keep it plugged in, and it monitors the ambient light and adjusts my monitor accordingly. A couple of other things I really like about the BenQ. One is it comes with a hood, which I've taken off right now because I've got my webcam on there. Um, but the hood is really good because it cuts down glare and it enables me to work, you know, in different lighting environments. And also it's easily adjustable, so you can adjust the height and the tilt. But a big thing I have here is this little puck. So there's a little puck here that I can just push individual buttons and there's three buttons on there that I can go between different profiles. Adobe RGB, which I do for the majority of my work. I can hit sRGB if I'm doing any web work and I want to kind of see what that looks like or multimedia. And then, of course, I've got Rec. 709. So when I'm editing video, working with video, I get a nice, accurate display of the colors that I'm going to see on the video standard. Super important. Now, I never work with just one monitor. I always work with two monitors. So the second monitor there is a 32 inch 4K Samsung monitor. It's a very cheap monitor, not very expensive. Um, and I'm not worried about critical color or anything on it because I do all my critical color work on my main monitor here on my BenQ. The other one I use for overflow. So if when I'm working in Premiere, for example, you can see I've got some of my panels, you know, my um, Lumetri and all scopes, different things like that on there. When I'm working in Photoshop, I have my panels. And then also other things. I'll keep my email program up there. Um, I'll have my Sonos app, like different things. So I have a lot of applications running 
on the second monitor. Now, as far as input devices, I'm just using an old wired keyboard. This is an old Apple keyboard with the uh, numerical keypad on it. Now, as far as the mouse, I know it came with the Apple Magic Mouse. I really don't use this either just because it's not comfortable for me ergonomically. But the other big thing is this is touch, kind of like a little bit like a touchpad on there. And when I'm working in Premiere Pro and stuff and I'm copying and moving things, I always tend to knock it side to side and then it scrolls windows and moves them around. So I don't find it very comfortable. So as far as the mouse, I'm using a Logitech uh, mouse here, multi-button mouse, and then this physical third middle button is really important if you're doing any work in Maya. So I do all my 3D work in Maya and I need that physical button more ergonomically comfortable. Now, I don't really do that much of my input work though with a mouse. Most of the time I'm using my Wacom tablet. So the one I've got attached right now is a Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. And uh, this is the latest one. And in fact, this is one of the ones we're gonna give away. Not this one, but a brand new one. So the thing I love about this is it's a pressure sensitive pen tablet. So this means it's a nice surface here. And when I use the pen, it feels like I'm drawing with a pen on paper. Very comfortable, very natural. Ergonomically, it's more comfortable than a mouse. I can work with this. I can flip it around. I can type, I can go back. And I can navigate with this as well as drawing with it. And this is where the big thing happens. This has 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity in this pen, which means that I can do shading like you would with a pencil rather than a pen. Have you ever tried to blend or shade with a pen? You can't. So that's the nice thing about it. I can use pressure sensitivity to vary my opacity or my pen thickness um, so it enables me to do great retouching and um, creative work as I'm doing my digital art on a computer. But not just that, it's also great for input, for marking up documents. It's great for doing signatures and different things like that because it's a very natural way to draw with a pen. People, people are used to this. It's just something you're used to. The other thing I like about this, because I've heard about different brands and stuff and people ask me about them all the time, I've always used Wacom since day one because, well, number one, Wacom invented this technology and it's very reliable. I don't know how many of these tablets I've had throughout the years. I've never had one break down on me. Very, very reliable. But also they have EMR technology, which is electromagnetic resonance. What does that mean? Well, basically what it means is this pen doesn't need power. So you don't have to plug it in. There's no battery and, and it's not running out at any time. So you don't have to charge it. It's always ready to go. But more important than that, you don't have the weight of the battery in here. So the balance on here is balanced for ergonomic comfort and it's not balancing trying to counteract for some, you know, battery in the back or whatever. The other thing about the tablet, if you look at it, it has eight express keys, and these keys can be programmed to do anything you can do with a keyboard shortcut. So obviously in Photoshop, Premiere Pro, I use them all the time, but also in things like Microsoft Word or even in my email program, I program these buttons to do different things. So it can be application specific. So this might, you know, copy a layer when I'm in Photoshop, but when I'm in uh, Microsoft Word, it might use an H1 uh, header tag. So you can control these by setting up different keyboard shortcuts, save you a lot of time. Also has this touch ring. The touch ring enables me in Photoshop, change the size of the brush, canvas rotation, zooming, things like that. And email, I can increment or decrement that. I can scroll, I can be in Premiere Pro, I can be scrubbing, just whatever you can program, you can program into here, into the tablet. The other thing that's nice about the tablet too, is it, is touch sensitive. So I can do multi-touch gestures or I can just scroll around for single um, finger, just like using it as a giant trackpad and it makes it very easy for me to navigate. This also works on Bluetooth and cable, but works perfectly on Bluetooth. But you know, as I am, the way I like to work, I like to just plug things in so I never have to deal with charging batteries. So I plug it in, goes into a USB port, no problem, runs great. So one of the other things a lot of people are doing are teleconferencing, webinars, things like that. So right now I'm just using a little uh, Logitech webcam. So one of the things I love about it, it's got a little door so I can close that door for privacy. 
and that webcam is never going to be on. No one's going to be able to see through that door. Plus, it has microphones built in, so I can do those Zoom conferences, different things like that through there, no problem at all. Now, I also do live streams, so when I'm doing the live streams, I use that webcam, and also I use OBS Studio here on my computer where I can do those live streams so I can simultaneously stream from here and from there. And if you guys tune in on Thursdays to our live from lockdown, this is the system I'm using. Now, as far as a mic, it's not great, but it's, it's, it's okay. And I'm using the Yeti Blue Mic. I think you guys have seen these. I know some people rave about them. The thing I like about it is, you know, it's going to have better quality than what most people are going to have on a web session. Um, but I wouldn't do my professional recording on it. I have other professional mics which sound much better. But this is USB powered, so you just plug it into the computer. And then you see this flashing red light. Turn it on. And now it's live. Now it's off. And you can adjust the volume right here. Very, very simple to use. And, you know, it has okay quality. Good enough. So I also have a 16 inch MacBook Pro here. So um, sometimes I'm working on both computers doing different things. Um, could be work on both at the same time or rendering or encoding on one while working on the other one. So sound is very important for me. I use the Sonos system. So I have uh, two Sonos Play 1s in stereo here. I have a sub to give me that nice bass I like when I'm working. And then also I have a Play 5. The nice thing about the Sonos Play 5, apart from balancing out the sound in the room, it also has input so I can hardwire from my computer into that Sonos system. Even though I could do it wirelessly, when I plug it in, I don't get any latency um, and, it, and it just works really well for getting all my computer audio sounds into the speakers, but also when I want to listen to things like music or YouTube videos, different things like that. I also have the Sonos speaker system throughout my house. So that means when I'm doing a webinar or whatever and I need to go to the kitchen, I can switch the speakers. I can turn on and off any speakers I want from my computer or, or from my mobile phone. So you can start on one, go on the other one. You can control it. That way I don't miss a word on the webinars, different things like that. It can just kind of follow me around. Now, of course, the biggest thing you want to have when you're working at home, very, very important is to have good internet. So not everyone even has the option to have good internet, but if you do have options, get the fastest internet you can get your hands on and what you can afford. In my situation, I'm very lucky. I've struggled with different types of internet throughout the years, but just recently AT&T dropped some fiber in here. So now I have a one gig up, one gig down, which is absolutely wonderful. And because of that, now I can upload my videos, YouTube videos, upload my courses very quickly. Now I run my computer hardwired into ethernet so I can get that full uh, one gig speed. The rest of the um, house is set up on a Wi-Fi system and that will run at about 300, which is good. You know, for Netflix, it's still very fast, but not as fast as obviously the one gig. Now I run dual uh, Wi-Fi's, I run that one, and then I have a dedicated Wi-Fi system running on a mesh system. And I use that for my smart home devices. So the smart home is actually powered by Amazon Alexa. I'm just pausing because that was the keyword. She woke up, I needed her to go back to sleep. And then I can use that voice control to control three main things in my house. One is the sound. So I have the Sonos speakers attached to it going through a smart things system. And I also have different sensors and different things like that throughout the house with that as well. But then also um, I can get the news, I can control the songs, I can get different things, I can tune into radio stations, and I can also do work, I can do calculations. If I need to do math, I just speak to the system and it will do that math for me. I also control my lighting, so I go through a Philips Hue uh, bulb system where I've got those throughout the entire house and separated by room so I can control all my lighting. And also my air conditioning and heat also goes through there. So I just say the temperature I want. So while I'm working, I can control my lighting, my heat, my sound just by speaking. That saves me having to get up or move around. Having said that, I've got a swivel chair. Everything I need is within reach. Um, I have my printer over here, which is an Epson P600. I also have an Epson P800 for doing the larger prints. And these are gallery quality prints. So these are great, you know, for, for that high quality work. I don't print notes and things like that on there. I just have a cheap little brother laser printer just sitting back there and it's just on wireless. 
and I can print to that from any of my computers. And that's just for those quick throwaway kind of things that you might want to print out. As far as drives and storage, it's very important to have enough storage. So right now I'm using a OWC Thunder Bay, which is 32 terabyte RAID system, which is running on Thunderbolt 2, which gives me enough speed for most of the things I need working on photos and different things like that. But while I'm working on the computer itself, I have two drives in there. I have the uh, just a one terabyte SSD drive that came with it. All my applications and programs stay on there completely separate. And then I installed a one terabyte uh, NVMe on there, Samsung, which is super fast. And so I'll use that for sometimes scratch disk work for Photoshop, which is going to speed things up substantially. And the other thing I can use it for sometimes is when I'm working on projects such as a video project, I'll move everything to the NVMe. I'll work off that drive. And then when I'm finished, I will uh, save it off to my RAID. And then I have a series of other drives that I use for archival work. So only the stuff I'm working on is on that RAID. So it gives me plenty of space to work with. So anyway, that's the gist of what I have set up here in my home office. Um, so right now we're gonna give away a Wacom, in fact, two Wacom Intuos Pro medium tablets. Thank you to Wacom for um, supplying those tablets. And this is available to anyone around the world, so it's not just in the US, and it's really simple. So if you wanna win it, what you need to do is just drop a comment into the YouTube channel and just tell us why you think you deserve the tablet inside the comments there. And then I'm going to use some software to randomly draw a winner from all those comments. And we'll do that drawing in a week from today. And in the second one, what we're going to do is this will be posted on the website along with written notes, instructions, links to the, uh, the gear I'm using. And also I'll add links to the gear here as well. But on there, if you share that article on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, so use the hashtag WFH. Photoshop Cafe. So that's WFH for work from home, Photoshop Cafe. And I'm going to go on there on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and we will pick a winner from there from someone that's used that hashtag. Now make sure you have to follow Photoshop Cafe. So the more of these networks that you follow us on and post it on, the more chances you have of winning. Also um, on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel here. And that way you'll also be in the draw to win. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching this. If you want to see a little bit more about some of my philosophy about working from home, some tips to be efficient and get things done, check out the other video on this. And if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.